Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Alexandra Kovalčíková, and I also work at Institute of Material Research, Slovak Academy of Sciences in Košice in Slovakia. Thank you again for the joining my talk. And today I would like to speak about mechanical and tribological properties of titanium diboride silicon carbide composites and titanium diboride silicon carbide graphene nanoplate with ceramics composite. This work was done with the collaboration with my colleague, but I will mention, mention it later on the end of my talk. On the beginning, I would like to tell you few words about the motivation of this work, why we decided to develop such type of the system, ceramic system. Then I will go through the preparation of this ceramics composite. I will show you some results about the phase and microstructural characterization. Then I will continue with the mechanical properties, basic mechanical properties like hardness, elastic modulus, fracture toughness, and bending strength. Then I will go through important typological properties for these uh, types of the composites. Later, I will, I will tell you why. And I will conclude the effect of the graphene nanoplate let's with different size and quality and effect of silicon carbide addition as sintering additive to the mentioned properties of such type of the composite ceramics. Okay, like no, which or which is the main aim of our work. Uh, I would like to uh, to say that last three years our working group was a part of the one European uh, project and the main topic of this European project was to develop silicon carbide based uh, ceramics as uh, for the wear resistance components which can be used for high pressure water pumps. And following this project, we decided to develop materials not only on the base, the carbide, but also the material based on the borides uh, for have uh, resistance components. And we need to keep two important requirements for such type of the technical application. It means that for the ceramics, ceramic comp composites, we need to keep coefficient of the friction equal or below 0.5. And the other sec or second requirement is to keep the specific rate, wear rate, around 10 to minus 6 millimeter per cubic newton meter. So there are two important requirements for the wear resistance components. Okay, let's go why we decided to develop the borides based ceramics. Titanium diborite is, 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 is a, is a um, titanium the diborite belongs to the group four and five compound. It's a part of the ultra high temperature ceramics with a melting point more than over than 3000 degrees C. Titanium diborite has many unique uh, physical and mechanical properties like very high hardness, more than 25 GPA, high elastic modules, very good uh, density or low density, low electrical resistivity and high thermal conductivity. Also, it has very good wear resistance. Although the borides possess many superior properties, the low fracture toughness and poor oxidation resistance limit, limited, limit they are using for the technical applications. Is the, this, it is the fact why we cannot uh, develop boron uh, titanium diborite with any additive. Usually used additive, there are a lot of metallic particles, but very famous ceramics uh, additive is a silicon carbide. It's used like sintering additive and also is used for improving of oxidation resistance. So we have titanium diborite, we have silicon carbide like sintering additive. And also we wanted to, to add graphene nanoplatelets for improvement other material properties. Our working group started to deal with the different carbon nanostructures um, addition to, uh, to brittle um, ceramics uh, almost in 2008. We started with uh, carbon nanofibers, then we continue through uh, carbon nanotubes. We, uh, we added this um, uh, carbon, uh, uh, carbon um, structures mainly to alumina, zirconia, or silicon nitride brittle ceramics. But later on, we continue through the silicon carbide, boron carbide, and now we try to put the graphene plate test to, to titanium diborite. There are three important things, why, uh, three important reasons why we, why we add the triple, uh, the 
carbon structure that the brittle ceramics forest is to improve tribological properties. That is very important also for our purpose because carbon structure should work like solid lubricant. Then to increase the fracture toughness because a lot of ceramics matrix are very are extremely bitter with a very low fracture uh, toughness around two and or three MPa per meter per cube uh, per. Uh, and also uh, to increase electrical conductivity because a lot of ceramics materials are not conductive or semiconductive ceramics. So there are three reasons why we would like to use graph and structure inside the brittle ceramics materials. So that's our composite system that we wanted to develop because we had the chance to develop new undescribed composite systems with promising material properties for real wear resistance components, which should work at demanding or extreme condition. So let's go uh, how we were successful in this uh, our uh, aim. We use um, commercially available stantic powders, titanium diboride with the uh, particle size between um, uh, 4 and 7 microns, and also we use as a static powder sub, sub micron sized beta silicon carbide. Beside these two powders, we use also two different types of graphene platelets. Powder marked like A, GNPA, was from the company Cheat Tubes with a particle size 1 and 2 microns and specific surface area around 700 meter per square per gram. Then we use GNPB from other company and it looks like small flags below 100 nanometers with the comparable surface uh, area. Here are the uh, picture how the graphene nanoplatelet type A and graphene nanoplatelet type B look like. So we see here in this uh, higher magnification, there is 200 nanometers, the larger graphene platelet, and also at the same magnification, very small uh, graphene uh, platelets like flex snow. Let's go further. Then in, we need to go through all standard metal of, uh, metallurgy procedure to get uh, the, the to get the um, composite. So in order to refine the particle size as received titanium diboride powder, this titanium diboride powder was milled in uh, using planetary ball mill. Milling condition were optimized in order to obtain fine powder with the particle size below y micron. Then, as received powder was uh, milled with tungsten carbide um, milling ball for two hours. Uh, then, isopropanol was uh, used um, uh, was uh, evaporated using rotary eva uh, vacuum evaporator. Then, the powder mixture were dried at 60. Uh, of 70 degrees C during uh, 12 hours in air. And the same condition will also use for the titanium diboride silicon carbide uh, composite and also titanium diboride silicon carbide and graphene nanoplatelet uh, composite. Then the powder mixtures were placed in the graphite dye with the inner diameter 20 uh, millimeters and sintered using DC current assistance sintering technology in direct hot press machine. The samples were sintered at 2,100 degrees C in argon atmosphere with external pressure of uh, 90 uh, MPa. Minimum uh, pressure of 7 um, MPa was kept uh, under the, uh, until the temperature of um, 1,800 degrees C. And then the pressure continuously increased with the increasing uh, temperature. Heating and cooling rates uh, were 100 degrees C per minute and well time of 7 minutes. Uh, was applied. So all experimental materials contain from 15 to 25 weight percent of silicon carbide like sintering additive and 1 to 5 or 10 weight percent of graphene nanoplatelets type A and also type B as reinforcing phase. All the results which I will show, which I will show you now were already published in Journal of the European Ceramics Society and this uh, article is already in press. Now let's go further. Here I prefer for you the the, the composition to be uh, to be much clear because for the next of my talk I will use a lot of uh, lot of graphs just to 
to, to be sure that we are able to recognize which sample is which. Yes, so on this uh, uh, yellow uh, square, there is titanium diboride plus silicon carbide composites and silicon carbide, the amount of silicon carbide increased from 15 to 25 silicon carbide amount, weight percent of amount of silicon carbide. So there is no graphene platelets. Then we prepare titanium diboride, the same amount, plus 15, 20 on 25 silicon carbide, but, but we keep the amount of the graphene nanoplatelets at two weight percent, just to have some graphene nanoplatelets in the structure, but uh, the same amount, increasing amount of silicon carbide in this case was for us important and also we use A and B graphene. Again, I repeat, A graphene is a, a larger one, one to microns, multi-layer graphene platelets. Number B are very small, below 100 nanometers a graphene platelet. Okay. And in this last uh, column, there are composites, titanium diboride, the same amount. 20, we keep the content of the silicon carbide on 20%. But we increase the graphene nanoplatelets, both types, from 1, 2, 5, and 10, to, to see the effect of the increasing amount of graphene platelets. So, no graphene, same content amount of graphene, but increasing amount of silicon carbide, and the same content of silicon carbide, and increasing amount of graphene nanoplatelets. So, let's go. Uh, now the results. I will start with the shrinkage, uh, shrinkage uh, curves. Both types of silly of carbon uh, graphene nanoplatelets promote densification as shrinkage curves are shifted to the lower temperature. For example, at this graph, at the temperature 2000 degrees C, the densification of titanium diboride plus, plus 25 silicon carbide reached um, is, is this, um, this it is uh, black curve reached the densification around 56 percent at the 2000 degree c while at the same temperature densification around 73 and 78 percent was reached when we add two percent of gnp type a or type b okay uh, other uh, shrinkage uh, curves the beginning of all curves look very similar, but the presence of, maybe we can look here, but the presence of graphene nanoplatelets change the shrinkage curve significantly at 1950 degrees C here. Yes? Interesting can be seen, for example, from 10% type A or type B graphene. Hey, it's, it's this um, dark green, dark green uh, curve. Uh, the densification and the last part over 1950 degrees C here is much more faster when compared to other samples. Before this interval, the shrinkage densification is very similar to the reference uh, material with 20% silicon carbon and no graphene addition. So from all this uh, shrinkage curve, we can really see the improvement of the densification with the addition of graphene nanoplatelet or let's say carbon structure uh, to the composite. Okay, let's go to the density. Uh, here on this graph, we see uh, the relative uh, density of composites without any uh, without any. Uh, relative density without uh, any silicon, uh, sorry, here, see here, without any uh, graphene nanoplatelet, we see that the acoustic amount of silicon carbide from 15 to 25 uh, change the relative uh, density uh, or there is no sim uh, significant change in the relative density and the numbers are between 89 uh, to 89.5% uh, uh, of relative density. Okay, then we go through uh, to the composite system with the graphene nanoplatelets. Here, this uh, black column, there are composites without graphene and a graphene platelet, and this blue one is a graphene number A and the red one, graphene number B. Here we keep the content of the 2%. From all this column, we can see that the addition of T2% of graphene nanoplatelets, both types significantly improve the densification because we reach almost 100% of theoretical uh, relative density, theoretical density of the material. 
So the same trend is observed here when we increase the amount of the graphene. There is a, this column is the titanium diboride 20% silicon carbide without graphene, and here is 1% graphene, 2, 5, or 10%. Both types, again, column, uh, blue column is a uh, graphene number A and red column graphene number uh, B. So it means that from 2% again, there is almost 100% of uh, relative density. I have to mention here uh, that uh, to the calculation of relative density, we have to also uh, um, we have to also think about the impurities which we uh, found at the XRD uh, XRD pattern. So to the calculation, we also include tungsten carbide in the amount of two uh, two and a half uh, weight uh, percent. No. XRD diffraction showed us uh, that predominant phases was aware titanium diboride, silicon carbide, beta silicon carbide, but also the peaks of the alpha silicon carbide were found, a trace of the carbon, uh, which corresponds uh, with the graphene nanoplatelet addition. But not only the preliminary or the primary constituent were found, but also a small amount of tungsten carbide in powder mixture, yes. Uh, but this tungsten carbide was observed only in the powder mixture before sintering. After sintering, here there is uh, this uh, this thing, okay, uh, peaks. Uh, after the sintering, this uh, tungsten carbide peaks disappear after the sintering at 2100 degrees C. The presence of tungsten carbide uh, impurities is due to tungsten carbide ball uh, milling contamination during high energy milling uh, process. Uh, despite the fact that, that uh, beta silicon carbide was used uh, as a starting sintering uh, in the starting uh, sintering powder, XRD analysis of the sintered material showed us also uh, the presence of alpha silicon carbide as well. This clearly confirms that um, partial beta to alpha phase transformation uh, of silicon occurred during the sintering in this present work. And this is very in good agreement with uh, earlier our earlier work, uh, which showed that the same beta silicon carbide powder undergo the phase transformation and the high temperature and high pressure when we sinter the material by fill assistance synthetic technology. Uh, also, we used, uh, we collected the Raman spectra from precise uh, polish, uh, um, precise polish uh, surface um, of uh, Titanium diboride silicon carbide composite and also titanium diboride silicon carbide and graphene nanoplatelet composites. No, and on this graph, there are stating three important bands, bands for the description of graphene type materials. There is a G band here, G band as a sharp band, uh, which appears um, uh, in the Rama spectra. And it which appears around uh, 15 uh, 87 centimeters uh, in the spectrum of graphene, and there is very uh, famous or uh, is common for all sp2 um, bonded graph uh, carbon systems. Uh, the D band here, next D band is known as a disorder uh, band uh, or the defect band. And the intensity of D band is directly proportional to the level of defect in the structure, in the sample. Second most prominent band or peak is 2D band of graphene and it exhibits uh, as a significant change. There is a in the case of the graphite, uh, graph, graphite sample. Yeah? If we have 2D band in the structure, there's a function of the number of the layers of the graphene and the number of these layers of the graphene uh, leads to the much border and upshifted uh, shape. In this case, 2D band may appear with very, very low intensity. No, in the flat uh, surface, um, in our samples, we also see the peaks here, the position here, and there are characteristic for silicon carbide. And titanium diboride is not a Raman active. As regards the graphene platelets, the position of D, G, and 2D band uh, are 
uh, are here. It, it means that uh, position of D band in our case is um, uh, D band is around uh, 1358, then G band 1585, and also uh, there is a 2D band at 2698. Uh, the intensity of the mentioned peak increase when we increase the uh, amount of the graphene nanoplatelet. Also, we calculate the ratio intensity between ID and uh, IG, and, the, the, and this ratio is very, very similar. It means that the structural disorder is very similar for all preferred uh, composite system. Okay. No, let's go to the microstructure. Let's go to the microstructure. Uh, here, there are, uh, as, uh, there are the micrographs for scanning electron uh, microscopes. And the microstructure of titanium diborite uh, with silicon carbide as a sintering additive is very, very uniform with the average grain size of titanium diborite between six and uh, four and six, um, uh, four and six uh, microns and very smaller uh, or smaller uh, silicon carbide grains between one to uh, two and three microns, and the silicon carbide grains are homogeneously distributed between titanium and diborite grains. Um, the images are very consistent uh, with the relative density, which support the fact that silicon carbide uh, reinforced set samples include a small content of the of the porosity less than two weight percent. In our case, increased amount of silicon carbide. Uh, didn't uh, did not influence the grain size of titanium diborite, but generally the presence of secondary silicon carbide phase prevents the grain coarsering during the sintering. Uh, the closer view uh, on the polished surface of titanium diborite and 25 silicon carbide are is shown here. We can see two distinct. If we look at this grain, two distinct uh, phases with different colors. Yes. Uh, and the its analysis confirm as uh, so-called core shell structure. It means that here in the core we have we can observe the titanium borate and traces of the carbon, but in the shell we can observe titanium uh, borate carbon, but also almost three weight percent of uh, tungsten. Uh, titanium. Um, it means that uh, tungsten, uh, uh, the tungst, uh, tungsten carbide impurities probably reacted directly with titanium diborite and diffused into the lattice of titanium diborite and to form solid solution titanium wolfram diborite. Uh, also, the existence of uh, wolfram uh, of tungsten was uh, confirmed by XRD, uh, XRD analysis. Uh, no, here are shown the cell uh, microstructures of the composite with the graph nanoplatelets type A. And here with the increasing amount 1, 2, 5, and 10 GNP, and also type B, 1, 2, 5, and 10 weight percent of graph nanoplatelets. It is evident that uh, during the processing uh, of titanium diborite composite, Graphene nanoplatelets survived the harsh condition. Uh, but to eliminate the artifacts uh, of the ceramographic procedure uh, on the polished surface, because we can see a lot of, uh, lot of pores, uh, uh, the microstructure after polishing seems to be uh, very porous in spite of the full densification, almost 100%. Uh, percent. Uh, we use the focusion beam uh, technique to prepare cross section. Uh, of the of the of the microstructure of the materials, the characteristic distribution of the single, yes, or agglomerated and or, uh, or overlapped uh, graph nanoplatelets type B are shown on this uh, picture, and we can um, see typical graph platelets, This really dark color. Typical uh, typical graph uh, platelets are mostly located between titanium type titanium borate uh, grain, titanium borate silicon carbide grains, but also in the uh, triple junction. Here is, uh, here is the higher magnification. Moreover, increased amount of graphene nanoplatelets lead, 
led to the final microstructure of prepar ceramics and form network structure. Yes, it is very, very visible uh, here. Final microstructure, 10% graph nanoplatelets with 1% uh, nano, graph nanoplatelets. Sorry, I go for that. Okay, location of graph nanoplatelets at the grain boundaries. At the grain boundaries. Uh, of titanium divora and silicon carbide and in the triple junction inhibited coarse, uh, grain coarsering during the sintering process. Silicon carbide grains were globular with the tendency of elongation in one direction. In, in the case of the presence of graphene nano uh, platelets. Okay, let's continue with the, uh, with the, uh, Fracture surfaces, titanium diboride silicon carbide composite show mixed intergranular and transgranular fracture mode. Uh, with the addition, very nice to see, yes, inter mixed intergranular and transgranular mode. There is high magnification, lower magnification of the fracture surfaces, but uh, with the addition of the graph nanoplatelet, both types, A or B, doesn't matter, the fracture mode change to the mixed fracture with a higher visibility of intergranular fracture at the, and the proportion of intergranular fracture increase with the increasing amount of the graphene platelet addition. Here on this map from this uh, ADS analysis, we can also see the, we can also see the, the, uh, the distribution of the graphene platelets at the fracture surface. Okay. Here, I would like to show you the higher magnification of the fracture surface, the location of the graphene platelets between uh, titanium and diboride grains. No, let's go to the mechanical uh, properties. The hardness of the silicon, the tungsten um, of the titanium diboride uh, was independent uh, with the increasing amount of the silicon carbide to the structure. It was kept, uh, kept around 24. Uh, GPA. The hardness was measured by in instrumented uh, method at five uh, kilogram. Okay. Uh, here we can uh, see uh, the influence of the addition of two weight percent of graphene both types. And but nicer is visible here on this graph when we use both types of the graphene. That on the beginning without graphene there is uh, the hardness around twenty four uh, GPA, but with the increasing amount up to weight G, G, GNP, the hardness uh, decreased very slowly, but at the higher uh, amount of the graphene, uh, there was a sharp, sharply decrease, sharp decrease of uh, indentation hardness um, from 24 up to uh, 15 uh, GNP in both, uh, both types, okay? Uh, uh, in, spite, in spite of the fact that the prepared composite uh, had almost full densification, um, decrease of hardness could be uh, attributed to the presence of hard, uh, high volume of uh, softer uh, reinforced things. Okay, when we look at the elastic modulus, the graphs look very, very similar. Elastic modulus of titanium deborite based composites slightly improved, increased from 382 GPA to to uh, 474 GPA at 25 sil uh, addition of silicon uh, carbide. It can be seen the young modulus uh, composites with the graphene decrease sharply with the increasing content of graphene nanoplatelets uh, from 378 to 260 and 236 GPA respectively. Yes, for both type of the of the silic uh, um, graphene nanoplatelet. No, but uh, what we can say that the addition of graphene number A or type A uh, proposed us a uh, little bit higher, uh, higher uh, elastic modules with the comparison of uh, graphene uh, platelet type, type B. Um, lower hardness and lower elastic modulus on young modulus of the composite with the graphene platelet could be also dependent on the residual porosity, which could remain in the material after sintering. 
But what was very important for us was uh, fracture toughness. Uh, with the increasing amount, we okay, we, we tested the fracture toughness uh, following the, um, the standard uh, Chevron uh, by Chevron notch test. We prepare sharp Chevron uh, notch tests uh, in the testing bar. And uh, following the calculation, uh, the fracture toughness slightly decreased uh, with the increasing amount of silicon carbide. Uh, but uh, what is very uh, nicely to see here that the increasing amount of uh, graphene nanoplatelets, mainly type A, it means this, uh, like let's say, larger graphene platelet, improve the fracture toughness almost 20% at the higher addition of uh, graphene nanoplatelets. Uh, the highest fracture toughness. 6.2 MPA per meter uh, at 10 weight percent of graphene nanoplatelets was measured. But as I mentioned, which is approximately 20% of uh, improvement of uh, fracture toughness. Uh, uh, as the mentioned um, uh, composites with 10 weight percent of uh, graphene nanoplatelets, we observe different type of uh, mechanisms, toughening mechanisms, um, mainly crack bridging, crack bridging or uh, crack branching uh, were noticed as mechanism of toughening together with the crack deflection deflection uh, and whisker like uh, silicon carbide grains these findings agree with our previous studies the and characteristics um, toughening mechanisms um, we also documented by stereofractography here and here picture c and d which we can uh, see graphene pull out and failure here and fracture of grouped uh, graphene platelet number number three okay so we can conclude that dominant toughening mechanisms on the materials with the graphene platelets is crack bridging by graphene nanoplatelets connected with individual platelets uh, pull out from the graphene boundaries and platelets flare together with the fracture uh, of group at final uh, platelets. No. Uh, let's go to the bending stress. Uh, bending stress was uh, tested by three point bend test. And we see very nice improvement in bending stress with the increasing amount of silicon uh, carbide. So the bending stress increase uh, uh, up to value of 600 uh, MPA at 25%. Uh, silicon carbide addition further improvement of cellular strength increased with uh, in, sorry with in, uh, sorry with incorporation of the graphene. You see that this black without graphene, yes, this black column, and these are with the addition of graphene. Sorry, sorry, once more. Tap. With the addition of graphene, really improvement of the bending strength, and when the increase of the amount of the graphene from one percent. The bending strength increased from six hundred, uh, from five, and on five hundred to six hundred MPA up to seven hundred MPA. What is um, almost forty percent of improvement of uh, bending uh, of flexural strength. Um, the highest uh, flexural strength maximum value was the seven hundred twenty nine MPA measured for titanium diboride plus two weight percent of graphene uh, number. Sorry. Number B. Uh, as is common in ceramic system, uh, the strength of the diborites is generally shown to increase with increasing grain size according to the half patch relation. Moreover, improvement of the relative density uh, is also beneficial to increase the strength of the uh, materials with the graphene uh, platelet ceramics. When we look, sorry, back, when we look um, here at the fracture surfaces again, we wanted to find the type of the fracture uh, origin. When we look at the fracture surface, uh, typically when we, when we found some typical fracture origin in, uh, in the near surface or surface located or volume located or edge located around the fracture origin usually fractography help us to find free uh, areas uh, so-called mirror mirror mist and heckle if there is a fracture origin mirror mist and heckle and 
it, it's typical here on this uh, on this picture. Me, fracture origin, mirror, miss heckle. When we see our fracture surfaces from all of our prepared materials, we can uh, we can conclude that macro fractography of bending bath after the strength test revealed no processing flow as fracture origin in uh, all investigated composites, and the fracture origins are probably surface defect or structural inhomogeneities, but in very small size. No. So we finish with the mechanical properties and let's go for the rest of the time for the typological properties. Um, we used, uh, there were for us very important to, to improve or to, or to, to investigate. Uh, we used a uh, tribometer booker uh, technique, uh, ballon flat, sliding was reciprocative, we use silicon carbide uh, friction counterpart load we use to load 5 and uh, 50 newtons uh, sliding spin 0.1 meter per second total sliding distance was set at 500 meters uh, at room temperature dry sliding condition that's very important to mention because it's really uh, extreme uh, like conditions for this uh, setup of tribological measurement and we have humidity in laboratory between 38 and 40 40 percent uh, okay, let's see the results. As the first glance here, there is a friction of coefficient is a ratio between uh, uh, normal and uh, uh, no. Okay, there is a coefficient of friction. Uh, at the first glance, we can say that the increasing amount of silicon carbide has no influence on the improvement of coefficient of friction. If we remember from the beginning, my thought at uh, the requirement is keep the friction uh, coefficient on, a, on the on the value 0 0.5 on below 0.5. Uh, so at five newton, uh, the coefficient of friction is between 0.55 to 0.6. At 50 newton, was a little bit lower between 0.5 and 0.55. No, but a different situation was when we add the graphene platelet to the structure. Uh, the lower value was um, visible only when we had higher amount, 10% of graphene uh, to the composite. It doesn't matter if it was type A or type B. So only in this case, at higher amount, it means 10 weight percent, we were able to go lower than 0.5 uh, coefficient of uh, friction. Uh, it can be seen that for used types of graphene platelet, the coefficient of friction remains basically the same. From this point of view, uh, in our study, no significant uh, lubrication effect uh, of graphene platelet on the coefficient of friction was observed. When we go to the very resistance of specific very weight, uh, we can conclude or we can we can say that at five newton of load during the tribological uh, test we achieved um, a better rate one order of magnitude lower compared to the very rate measured at 50 uh, newton regarding regarding to the wave behavior all graphene nanoplatelet composites exhibit higher bare resistance than the reference is because if there is a there is a reference material, the low resistance is, if, if there is a reference material without any graphene, 28 percent silicon carbide, the wear resistance specific wear rate decrease, it means that the wear resistance uh, increased. Mm -hmm. Specific wear rate value, volume was between uh, 5 to 9, um, 10 times to minus 7 millimeter per cubic newton meter. Uh, and between 3 to 6 times uh, 10 to minus 6 uh, and are calculated at 5 and 50, uh, 50 newtons. Specific bar rays of titanium uh, diborite decreased at 50, 50 uh, newtons uh, load, while at 5 newtons are closer to the, uh, to the, to the uh, composites without any graphene addition. For both types of the graphene platelets, there was a significant drop in the wear rate at one weight percent here. Okay, and the loss, lower, lowest wear rate uh, of two ten time ten minus six millimeter cubic newton meter were measured mainly 
at the incorporation of the high amount of both types of additive. Here, here they're from comparison how 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 look the track on the one surface at five newton and fifty newtons uh, on the materials without any graphene. No, when we look to the worn surfaces, in order to also understand the better behavior, the worn tracks uh, were also again investigated after, uh, after typological test by scanning electron microscope, and it shows us that the, uh, we have here five newton and fifty newton uh, load during the sliding, and it's uh, at five newton uh, we can see the direction of the of the sliding and um, that uh, the area or the one surfaces are very smooth with have no visible uh, or with, with no visible micro cracking or wear debris so it means that is a result of milk wear damage the direction of the sliding is really uh, visible at the higher magnification of 50 newtons the surface were rougher and showed micro scratches and they are covered by uh, higher quality uh, quantity of wear debris, these whiter areas. The addition of graphene platelets did not change the morphology or the form surface. Uh, only the higher portion of the micro cracks was uh, formed. The wear tracks uh, materials uh, with the graphene at 50 newtons were more fractured with a higher portion of the tribal layer. Graphene platelets are clearly visible here in the one surfaces it means that still survive the tribological uh, sliding and condition during the sliding also we did again the raman spectroscopy after wear damage uh, on the wear tracks and we would like to uh, to see to understand the extent of the damage of the graphene after tribological test so we calculate the shift uh, of the d g and 2d band in the peak position of composites and this uh, small shift show us uh, that uh, uh, there in the structure there are residual tensile strain in the wear track of titanium diborite silicon carbide composites not only the presence of silicon carbide peaks but also there is a presence of also the the graphene or, or, or the presence of g and d peaks on the carbon structure it means that uh, it means that uh, probably we have not only the silicon carbide from the matrix, but also we have in the structure silicon carbide uh, from the counter, um, uh, counterpart during the tribological sliding. Also, we calculated the, the ratio between uh, ID and IG for the vertex um, in the vertex from um, addition of uh, graphene type A and also addition type, type B. This ratio are very, very comparable. And uh, it means uh, that um, uh, that the formation of defective and fragmented graphene platelets uh, during um, tribological uh, testing um, is visible and can be contribute to the creation of tribofilm in the worn surface and improve. And in this case, we can improve the very resistance uh, of uh, composites with graphene platelet addition. Um, okay, on the last slide, I would like to uh, to show you uh, the EDS map uh, on the on the one surfaces of titanium diboride with five percent on GNP type B, and we can see uh, very clearly the uh, islands or the creation of the tribological islands composed mainly of the oxide, uh, carbon, titanium, and boride. And calculation show us that probably we have creation of the carbon, titanium, diboride, and silicon oxide uh, tribophil. And because it's not uh, like consistent, but there are only islands or some portion, uh, uh, we cannot we cannot get more improvement uh, in the wear resistance uh, material, uh, wear resistance of this composite. So. Uh, let me conclude that the, that the main uh, tribologic or main wear mechanisms was mainly tribal oxidation uh, in all materials with the, with the, with the graphene addition. No, let me conclude uh, uh, the, the, the result. Increasing amount of the silicon carbide in the structure of titanium diboride improved the relative density, but very slightly, has no influence on grain size of titanium diboride. We keep the hardness around 24 GPA, fracture toughness around 5, and bending strength around, uh, increase from 400 to 620 MPA. 
similar coefficient of friction was measured in interval between 0 0.5 and 0 0.55 and increased the wear rate from uh, 3 to 6, 10 times to minus 6 uh, millimeter cubic newton meter. In the case of the addition of the graph nanoplatelets, uh, both types of graph nanoplatelets significantly improved the zinification almost to 100% uh, uh, of theoretical density. Increased density was independent on size, morphology, and quality of the graph nanoplatelets. Hardness uh, in decreased from 24 to 15 GPA, and also the similar trend was observed in the case of elastic modules. But we improved the fracture toughness uh, around 20%. And also, we improved the strength between 30 and 40%, uh, percent, uh, mainly at the higher value of uh, GNP uh, addition. Also, we keep the lower coefficient of friction below 0.5 when we add 10% uh, of GNP both types. And the addition of GNP both types has positive influence on wear resistance, mainly at higher load. Uh, we observe creation of tribochemical islands. It means as the result of uh, local oxidation, oxidation from humidity. Um, mainly composed mainly from oxide, uh, silicon, titanium, and carbon elements. Uh, however, we, we achieve very low specific wear rate at uh, lower um, and lower uh, uh, loading. Uh, so, uh, as a result, we develop very promising ceramics composites based on titanium diboride, mainly with the addition of two graphene nanoplatelet state uh, A. -A. So on the really end, I would like to uh, thank all my colleagues, which helped me with this work, and also uh, uh, you, which we just spent these 45 minutes with me. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.